<sighs> moving right along. I feel like I forget to breathe when I'm talking. <laughs> I feel like y'all are going to think I'm way more out of shape than I actually am. Like I'm a big girl, but I'm not completely out of shape. I do go to the gym. I just kind of forget to breathe when I talk <laughs> and I get so excited. Like I feel like I have to get everything out and then I just keep talking and talking and talking. And then by the time I stop, I really got to breathe. So I'm like, <sighs> peeps welcome to another movie review <laughs> I never figure out if they're stale or not before I start talking and then I have to awkwardly look down and figure it out anyways today I'm talking about the hollow directed by Corin Hardy um, the hollow is about a young couple that has a newborn child and they move out to somewhere in oh Ireland? Pretty sure it was Ireland <laughs> or Ireland. Um, there I go with my heavy breathing. <laughs> um, I think now it was Ireland. Um, they move out to Ireland because the husband Adam's job is, I don't even really know what it is. Um, it has something to do with like cutting down forest to, I guess, for like development. So I guess to put in homes or shops or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, and of course the locals don't want him disturbing the forest. And of course, creepy things start happening because of this, like, you know, from the forest. Um, so we'll get right into what I liked about the movie and it was the whole concept of the forest being inhabited by fae or fairies. I feel like there are like <laughs> little to none, little to no, <laughs> I feel like there are little to no horror movies that deal with like kind of like Irish folk tales and lore and legends and things like that. So a really big thing is like fae, like I said, or fairies. Um, and I've read like those, t <laughs> this is gonna sound funny, but this, that subject tends to be the subject for a lot of like young adult novels. So like, I mean, I still read young adult <laughs> novels to this day, but in high school, I read a lot of books that that was like the subject of it. It had to do with those, that type of folklore. Um, but I've like never seen it in a movie, almost, ne almost never. Um, so it was really cool that they incorporated that because while of course the young adult novels like romanticize the idea, um, the real like folk folklore and legends like, have the fae being like a lot of times they're like child snatchers so they'll steal children or they lure people into their domain where they kill them eat them whatever um <laughs> so it really is quite scary so i like the idea that instead of romanticizing it they made it scary like the legends and folklore would suggest what I didn't like about the movie is that the exposition is lightning fast. Like there is little to no exposition and then we are right into the the conflict and the rising action. You know, that arch, oh, sorry, <laughs> took my hair with me. Uh, um, you know, we all learned about like that arch in English class or a film class, you know. We have the exposition, the conflict, which starts the rising action and the climax and then the falling action and then the resolution. Um, yeah, the exposition is like this. Um, Cause like, like I said, I, I don't even really know what Adam's job title is in the movie. Like, <laughs> like in the opening credits, we see Adam and his wife Claire driving to their new home. And, and then before you know it, they've been there for a month already and one of their neighbors, Colm, 
harasses them a lot about Adam going into the woods and like not to disturb it. They call it like the hollow, hence the title of the movie. Um, so I really, I really just wanted a little bit more exposition. I wanted to get to know the characters a little bit more before we got into the conflict. I feel like the conflict happens within like the first five minutes of the movie. Like <laughs> I just wanted a little bit more time to get to know the characters before we got into the conflict. So yeah. The best part about this movie was the actual monsters, the fae themselves. Oh my God, were they creepy looking for one. Um, <laughs> and just like the design of them was so good. Like they made them look so creepy. Like I can imagine those creatures stepping right out of the pages of Irish legends and folklore and things. They were kind of like a mixture of CGI and SFX stuff and it just, it came off so well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it came off so well. I think it was a really good combination of computerized effects and practical effects. So great job on that. Um, yeah, so overall, hmm, overall, I, I would recommend you watch it, sure. I would recommend it. It wasn't, the bad parts weren't so bad that I wouldn't ever watch this again. I'm, I'm probably gonna watch it again, for sure. Um, it was, like, it was creepy enough that I could, I could, uh, get into it some more, you know? Um, and I think... I think it's on Netflix right now. I'm not really sure. Um, I came across it at Movie Stop, so I had it on DVD. That's how I watched it, but I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix now. So you can go watch it for yourself if you so wish. And of course, if you've seen it already, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. And until next time, stay straight. Bye. <laughs> As always, be sure to leave me recommendations for future movie reviews in the comment section down below. I really want to get into doing um, remakes versus originals again. Um, I used to do those a while ago and I really like doing them. So if you have any suggestions for those in particular, leave them for me right down there because I want to start doing those again. Um, and of course, as always, social media stuff over here and I'm on other places as well just search Nightmare Maven if you want to and also if you want to <laughs> I know that was so awkward um <laughs> there's a subscribe button right down there I'll just beat myself out okay bye <laughs>